For the first time in decades, the FDA has approved a new oral antibiotic for urinary tract infections. The pill, Blue Jeepa, was approved for women and girls 12 and older with uncomplicated UTIs, which are the most common type of infection in women. Joining us to talk about this and our other health headlines, he is Dr. Jeff Potoff, UW Health Chief Quality Officer. Hey, doctor, great to see you. Okay, UTIs. That is super common, but treating them has become more difficult. Why? It has. So what's happened with urinary tract infections is that the E. coli, which is the number one bacteria that causes them, has progressively gotten more resistant to a lot of the antibiotics that we use to treat it. Uh, that's where a medication like Blugipa, uh, which works via, via a new mechanism, uh, is unlikely to experience that kind of resistance. Now, for most uh, individuals who get urinary tract infections, uh, we are able to do a culture. We get sensitivities back. We understand exactly which antibiotics are going to work and are not going to work. And most of the time, we can find something that's generic and very affordable to treat urinary tract infections. But every once in a while, we get into a little bit of trouble. We don't have a good option. This is where Blue Jeepa could come in. It's going to be very expensive to start with, so it won't be a preferred antibiotic. But it might bail us out in a pinch if we have an E. coli that's resistant to the normal medications we would use. Uh, so it's no magic medicine, like it only works about half the time, which is better than other medicines on the market. What I was surprised that the first new medicine in this category in decades, why? Yeah, I think, you know, we've seen other medications uh, to treat uh, urinary tract infections come out, but they're based on uh, older classes, penicillin, cephalosporins, things like that. Uh, I think, you know, the bar to find a novel mechanism or a new mechanism that uh, that uh, makes the E. coli die, uh, that takes a bit more work. And I think that's what's nice about this particular medication is it gives physicians more options uh, for people who are struggling with resistant, uncomplicated urinary tract infections. More options, always better. I, I found this concerning for women. Cancer caused by HPV increasing in some U.S. women. What's what's happening? Yeah, I think uh, there's, there's two things here. So if we look at screen rates for women for uh, cervical cancer between 2019 and then 2023, we're down about 6%. Some of that's likely related to decreases during the pandemic that have not yet rebounded. Uh, we want to get that improved. I think secondarily, uh, 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 cervical cancer is one of the most preventable cancers in women. There is a vaccine uh, that we use against human papillomavirus. Human papillomavirus causes almost all cervical cancer. Uh, and uh, in studies in women who have gotten this vaccine, we can reduce uh, cervical cancer by about 80 percent. Uh, but we do see a, a good number of women who are not getting this vaccine. Either uh, decisions are making themselves or parents aren't getting their young children, uh, their uh, you know, uh, early adolescent children's vaccinated. Uh, so I think twofold here. One, uh, if we're not vaccinated against human papillomavirus, get that done. Two, uh, even if you are, make sure you're doing that cervical cancer screening once every five years for folks uh, who can get tested for HPV, uh, once every three years for people who are just getting pap smears. Uh, important things to consider because this is largely preventable. Yeah, it saves lives for sure. This caught my attention. Gum chewers, listen up. A new study says there's a good chance you're chewing on plastic when you pop that gum in your mouth. What did researchers find? You know, this is true. So uh, these are researchers that looked at people chewing both uh, natural gum, uh, so with like plant-based gums, and then also synthetic gums with petroleum-based uh, kind of rubber uh, in the gum. Uh, and, you know, not surprising, uh, these rubber products often contain plastic-like chemicals. Uh, if you chew these uh, gums uh, and we uh, collect your saliva and look for microplastics, we see it. Uh, ben, no surprise, microplastics are everywhere. We see them in the Arctic, we see them in the Amazon. They are everywhere. Uh, the thing that's out there yet, though, that we don't know is, is what is the real impact on human health? There's some early studies that say maybe if we inhale these microplastics, they can cause some oxidative stress, stress in the lungs. We just don't know what the uh, human health implications of these things are yet. So, uh, you know, if you're someone who's really worried about it, uh, decreasing chewing gum will decrease your exposure to microplastics. But for the most part, um, we are all getting exposed to these every day. Uh, we need to study to see what the actual impacts on human health are. I saw the researchers here, even the organic, not going to save you just as much in the organic as the synthetic one. So, but this is good because my daughter, who's four, started chewing gum. And now I'm going to tell her that's just all plastic that you're chewing on. So don't do that. <laughs> that's right. Dr. Jeff Potoff, thanks for uh, the way to get my daughter off gum. Appreciate it. And all the other headlines today. Anytime.